Hey, Brody, Jordy, over here. Um, just been talking to Ian. Obviously, that's his last week as an, as an All Black coach. Can you guys both just sum up the impact he's had and how proud you are that he got through some of the stuff he was copying last year and is here coaching you guys in the World Cup final? Yeah, it's um, it's pretty special, I think. Obviously, um, probably the rockiest, if that's what you want to label it, kind of time within my tenure of the All Black jersey, and obviously probably to see what both Fozzie and and Sam went through off the field. And um, I think, as I heard him say, you know, the group know knew where they needed to go, and um, I think that's probably the proudest bit is you know that he's come out of that and coached this group to where we all knew we needed to be, and um, you know, I think the ultimate pay of respect is to get the job done on on Saturday night for him and and um, show him how much the players have enjoyed having him as our head coach. Yeah, for me, it's just um, yeah, it's been great to see yeah the players ultimately uh, put some performances out there that um, reflect his his coaching ability and um, yeah, there's no mistaking where you were under a lot of pressure, players and coaches, and um, through that period, believe it or not, Fozzie didn't panic, and neither did the players, and we could see a bit of light there. So, um, yeah, it was a, a rocky period, as Guzzle said, but um, we're just reaping a few rewards now, so um, big challenge again. Uh, hey, Brody. Um, just on your sort of last game coming up for the All Blacks and you know, I'm sure you'll take time to, re to reflect when, once this is done but how special is it for you to for this last game to be a, a World Cup final against the Springboks another chance to go at Evan um, is it kind of the perfect farewell for you in a way? Yeah I think it's you know it's awesome well, you can't really put into words like to be in a Rugby World Cup final obviously was lucky enough to experience it in 2015 and, and to come here and this be my last game in the jersey um, and have the opportunity to go out there and, and potentially win it again. Um, yeah, I guess if you want to call it a fairy tale ending or however, but it definitely beats uh, where we were four years ago playing for third and fourth, that's for sure. Geordie, Mark here. Hey, um, just could you just talk to a bit, a bit of the balance, I guess, of excitement of the occasion of the big occasion you know you guys talk about walking towards the light and all those sort of things at versus I guess kind of being uh, cool and clinical about it you guys have built some great form since that loss to France and obviously heading in all the right directions you know um, I guess you'd, you you want to stick to what's worked for you but that versus all the excitement and the occasion how do you balance that? It's a good question. Um, it's a question I've been asking a few of the senior players as I haven't been to a World Cup final before. But um, I think like this week we've just been enjoying the week, enjoying each other's company and understanding it's a, it's a fresh week, uh, a new beast, new challenge, World Cup final, different conditions, different opposition, playing against the world champs, world number one side and it doesn't get any better than that. So... I guess in a lot of ways we're just trying to enjoy it, walk towards the challenge. I know it sounds cliche, but um, yeah, we started the tournament pretty slowly and we've gained a wee bit of momentum, but that doesn't guarantee anything. We've, we've said all along this World Cup, we, the best teams um, have been the best teams on the night, so um, that's, that's going to be no different come Saturday. Uh, Brody. Uh, South Africans often talk about playing for their country for the you know, near on 60 million there and, and perhaps the difficulties the country faces there. For yourself and for the All Blacks, what do you think the All Blacks play for? Is it for the outgoing players? Is it the, the fans? What, what is it? Yeah, I think it's an array of things for everybody. I think, you know, they if you ask the South African team too, they probably want to make each other proud, you know. I think um, we earn the respect of each, our peers within the team by doing our actions and performing um, in the biggest moments. But made no mistake about it, like we're, we're here representing New Zealand as well. Obviously we don't quite have the population, but um, we've seen the support that's coming from home and across the social media channels, how excited people are and had a lot of messages over the last couple of weeks. So 
you know, we're here to represent the country, the jersey, um, ourselves as individuals and, and, and the team. Brody, one question. Obviously, obviously, it's a Rugby World Cup final. But can you describe us, as a New Zealander, what South Africa means to a rugby player in New Zealand? What is South Africa or what the Springboks are for you? Thank you. Yeah, I think, you know, personally, the, from the Springbok encounters I've had, it's like the ultimate challenge, whether we're up in the high veld of South Africa or that, that down New Zealand or here in a, in a Rugby World Cup. You know, we, we know, obviously, with their split two, that they want to come at the four pack and come up front and, and try and dominate, and we know it's always physical um, with South Africans. So, yeah, I think, um, from my point of view, it, it is the greatest challenge uh, that we have in Test Rugby. Uh, Brody, uh, just down the front, Richie McCaw in camp today and through a fair chunk of this tournament. Does it bring back shades of, of 2015? Also, what has he been able to add for you guys? Yeah, it's, um, yeah the, those boys have kind of been coming in since we assembled in Napier. And I think just having them around and having the conversations, like Geordie said, like a lot of the boys haven't been here and having some of that experience. And you know, he's hugely respected within the team. So... Just having them here, and you know, Conrad's been in, Tana Umang has been in, DC's been around. Um, just having those boys come in and just watch, and that, you know, they're also providing some feedback on what they're seeing, and um, you know, adding value to the team. I think. And just a quick one for Geordie playing with your brothers, a World Cup final. I'm sure it never gets old playing test matches with those other two. But what does it mean to play in a cup final with the family? Yeah, certainly it doesn't get. Um any bigger for, for our family and I mean we'll, hopefully we'll have time to reflect afterwards and maybe look back on it in a few years time but it's um, such a cool time and yeah it's just um, yeah for us we just enjoy each other's company it's um, you look around the huddle we see a couple of brothers and it's a pretty cool connection and we're lucky to have uh, a lot of our family over here supporting us this week and um, so it's such, such a special week that we'll cherish. <clears throat> Jordy, um, you were responsible for one of the great defensive plays of this tournament on Ronan Kelleher in, in the quarterfinal um, when you broke Irish hearts. Um, what do you remember about that moment and do you ever have a sliding doors moment since then to think, oh my God, if I hadn't made that, things could have been different that you mightn't be sitting there, uh, sitting here today? S certainly, there's, there's moments like that in every test match and the, the thing is you don't know when they're going to turn up and... That particular moment there happened um, before I even realised it was a split second decision. Luckily, I'd seen Richie Moe hold up a couple of players in similar positions off the back of a mall this year in test matches. So um, he provided an example for me, and it was, I guess, it was a sliding doors moment. It turned out to be a big moment in a test match, and who knows, it might be someone else in, in a final. Um, so. Look, that was a couple of weeks ago. We got a fresh challenge, best team in the world in a, in a World Cup final. So it's going to probably come down to a, a moment similar. Uh, Brody, one here. Sorry. You've been alongside him for a lot of his career, but Aaron Smith walks away from the All Black jersey on Saturday. How special will it be being alongside him as he leads the hacker for the last time on Saturday? Yeah, um, it's going to be cool, all right? You know, we played a lot of footy together. Um, you know, we debuted on the same night and we're, we're going to finish together. So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. He's obviously a massive part of our group. And um, even last week when he scored that try, I said, geez, you've still got it, mate. So, um, yeah, it's, it's special. And I know he's going to relish it. He, he loves leading the hucker. So, you know, I hope, I hope he goes well and the full pack gives him the platform that he deserves. Oh, hi, Brody. Just a question for you. I mean, you've played well over 100 tests and we know that, you know, many times we've probably thought you're an automatic selection. But just given in the playoffs that Sam played last week and this is a World Cup final, did you have nerves or anxiety before the team was revealed? Um, Ian just said before how hard it was to tell Dane that he'd missed out. What was it like for you waiting to see when the, the 23 was going to be named? Um, yeah, not too dissimilar to most weeks, to be fair, obviously. Um, you know, Sam and Scooter playing outstanding at the, at the moment as well and I think it's probably one part of this group that I learnt from an early time, whatever your, your role is within the within the squad, come team naming, then you get on and do it. And uh, Colsey was a great example of that this week. I, you know, I felt for him that 
he didn't get to play or um, this week. So, yeah, I, I can't. The selection's out of a player's control, so put my best foot forward and, and see what they name. Hello. Um, are you driven by a feeling of revenge after Twickenham before the, the start of the Rugby World Cup? To be honest, we haven't uh, really referenced the, the game at Twickenham. Um, we've understood this is a completely different assignment, uh, a massive challenge, Springbok side of a 7-1 split in a World Cup final. So, um, yeah, we, we haven't fallen back on that week and it's, it's not going to be an emotional response as such. This is a completely different challenge for us. Uh, good evening, Brody. Good evening, Jordy. I'm Brody for you. Um, does the fact that South Africa and New Zealand no longer play each other in Super Rugby make this game all the more special now? Because there isn't that fami that, that domestic familiarity that often would, would would lead to a subplot leading into a test match. The test match just stands alone now as the as the clash between South Africa and New Zealand. Yeah, I think um, you know we're not going up there in Super Rugby. Like you miss the experience of playing in South Africa, which which to us Kiwis is. You know, pretty special. But in saying that, because it is rarer that we play the South African teams now, it almost makes it more special. I think. You know, everybody looks forward to the Test match. I know the one earlier in the year, year in New Zealand was sold out a couple of weeks before it because you know, spectators know what they're going to get. So, yeah, Test match rugby obviously slightly different to Super Rugby as well. But I think you know, playing each other less almost creates more excitement and um, anticipation around around the game. Just the makeup of your bench, can you, a uh, couple of little tweaks, I guess, to what we might have thought was your top group, um, and you've gone for Nepo at tight head. Is that a response to, I guess, you, to what's coming, the power in the second half from the box? Yeah, it's certainly a response. It's not so much a response to the power, more, more the techniques that we think we're going to have to deal with. And Nepo is a very strong scrummager, very experienced, and... Um, you know, he, he's trained so well, he's disappointed he probably didn't play the last two, but uh, this is a great occasion for him. And alongside Sam Asoni, with the likes of Sammy Whitelock on the bench, there's a really believe we've got a lot of confidence in that group coming off. Uh, Sam, um, can you just talk through, obviously, Big match, big occasion, just the balance between the, the head and the heart. Um, we see you in the tunnel running out for the game, obviously ready to go. Um, we heard earlier in the week about the heartfelt speeches. Um, so just the, the balance of an occasion like this between between passion and, and strategy and, and heart. Yeah, I think a lot of it comes down to our preparation. I mean, earlier in the week, we, We've got a, a lot of experience in this squad and it'd be silly not to tap into some of that, particularly for the younger guys, so that's all that was. Uh, we've been really clear and we've uh, built how we want to play as a team. So in terms of head and strategy, I think we're, we're really clear and we're in a good place. Uh, and with that comes confidence and that um, yeah, there'll certainly be... Uh, high level of an emotion and intent to start the game, um, but there always is, and, and the boys, I think, uh, you know, we've played two finals, two knockouts, effectively more, actually, um, in a row, so I, I trust that we're in a good spot there. Uh, boys have done a lot of, yeah, a lot of physical and mental prep, and um, although it's a final, it is another game, where we just have to go out there and, and trust ourselves and, and trust ourselves to, to play good footy. So, uh, yeah, it's a fine balance, but the team's in a good spot with it. Hey, Ian. I'm here. Um, Aaron Smith will play his last game in an all-black jersey this weekend. How's he been this week, and what legacy do you think he's going to leave behind? He's been good. He's preparing to play a World Cup final and, and that takes 100% of your attention and, and care of preparation. And, and really, you know, we, we, we know it's, it's the last game for some pretty iconic players, but that's, that could be the case in both teams. And quite frankly, we don't really sort of want to talk too much about that. 
I think there's time afterwards. Like right now, the the occasion in front of us is so exciting, and we don't want to waste a day of that thinking about about post game. So um, he's prepared well. He's excited. Um, needs a tap on the head sometimes when he gets too excited, but that just means he's in a good place. Ian, um, there's been all sorts of rumours going around New Zealand around Richie Moonga's fitness. Can you just confirm that? And also, how important will he be going up against Pollard this um, this Saturday night? Confirm what is serious injury that he, that he's good to go. Yeah, you know, I read that. I was very interested because I hadn't heard it from my own medical staff, so I don't know where that came from. So he's good. And and just on the, the battle against Pollard, or how important the tens are going to be on, on Saturday. Oh, night. look, tens are key in in, um, in in big games. They always are, um, but. Again, it's you know we like to take the pressure off one person by by the people in front of them doing a, a really good job by by our nine giving great service and and having great communication from the outside and that's probably the key when you play South Africa you know there's a lot of a lot of different pitches you see outside your ten and so the comms that we we get from outside that and that's something that we've been working on but he's um uh, Rich, Richie's in a great spot you know he's leading the team well and. From from that from that ten jersey and got a smile on his face and and is uninjured. Um, Sam, uh, you've real momentum now as a team, especially over the last two weeks. If you can reproduce the performance levels that you produced, particularly in that mm. phenomenal win over Ireland a couple of weeks ago, will that be enough to win the World Cup? Do you think? No, I think we're going to have to be better, to be honest. Uh, and. You know, you said we build momentum, but each each week we're we're trying to get better, and um, we're going to have to be at our very best on Saturday night, defensively and attackingly, and, and attacking. So, um, yeah, that's our mindset. That we're going to have to put out the the best performance we have all year, um, and if we do that, then we'll give ourselves a good shot. Good day, Ian. Uh, a question from Martin Devlin, who couldn't be here today. Sorry, he's a bit unwell. Um, You've long talked about how it's all about the team, and particularly this year, it's all about going out there and doing your best to go out there and win a World Cup. Despite everything that you've personally been through over the last year or so, are you at peace with where you guys are at right now? Are you happy with what you've achieved to this point and being in a position to go out there and, and win a Rugby World Cup? Am I at peace? What do you reckon? Yeah, I'm reasonably peaceful. I think... Um, it's a. I love the word, but I, I'm not sure I'm feeling peaceful right now. I'm, look, I'm. We're, we're where we want to be right now. We're excited by this, and and you know I've been saying it for a while. You know we lost the first game to France. After that, everything became pretty important. And but we, we've said all on this team has thrived on being in the now, focusing on on what we're doing now. It's been um, something that we've loved doing. It's enabled us to deal with any particular noise outside or circumstance outside that may have affected this team. And and and, and I think it's a massive credit to to our Sam, our leaders, for that we've been able to stay in that place. And so we've woken up this mo this this week and we're in a World Cup final, and and we're excited. And it's um. And, and right now we're, we're trying to make sure we balance the, the control of the emotion of it versus, you know, dealing with all the messages we're getting from home and even people in France have been massive and I have to thank them for, for an awesome support that we've had from, from the local people too. But managing all that so that we can just go out, put a smile on our face and play our game. And that's what we're focusing on. We, we know it's a... There's two great teams out there, different styles. They're great at their style. We want to be great at ours. So. Sam, just down in front here. Um, I know it's not about one man, but how much do you play for your coach in this final? Oh, a, a coach Sam. who you've been through a lot with. Um, might say those sort of things for... For, for post game, but to be honest, like we've got so many reasons to to want to play well, and um, you know one's not bigger than the other, but I think probably the biggest reason we want to play well is to make New Zealand proud. Like it's been truly overwhelming the support, and just makes you feel so damn special and proud to be a Kiwi. Um, and we want to go out there and and 
do the do the ultimate job and and make them happy. So um, that's probably our biggest driving factor. And below that, there, there's plenty of other little ones. But um, yeah, the best way when Foz talks about bringing it back to the now, it's easy to for your mind to to drift to what if how they're going to feel or what's this going to if we get the outcome we want. Um, but you've really got to be disciplined and and bring yourself back to what's important right in front of you um, and, and worry about doing that. It's the process, I suppose. First time I've gone a little factor for a while too. A big factor, I suppose. Have I just wasted my one question, Ian, or yeah, was, oh, that, was that well, a fairly decent that, that was a poor one. <laughs> I'll give you one more crack. Uh, Ian, I'm going to jump in before I'll he does. Um, a lot of talk about the departing players. Um, sorry, just here. Sorry. Um, one who won't get that chance, obviously, Dane Coles. How tough was the conversation with Dane to, to tell him that he won't have another game in the jersey? Yeah, tough. And, and again, you know, we, we, we've kind of, we want to elect to not talk too much about posts, but um, uh, that was a tough one. You know, probably the toughest I've had as a coach. The way that I would have expected him to. He's a champion. Uh, um, good evening, Ian. Uh, it's Kanye Suya from News 24 Sport in South Africa. Um, just talk us through what you make of um, the Springboks' 7-1 bench split. Um, with, the, you, with your team applying the 5-3 bench split, it comes across as method against madness, convention against, um, in inverted commas, uh, experimentation. Something that they've tried twice and clearly they've seen that, they, that it works. Yeah, look, it's a tactic that, I mean, that's what I love about the game. You know, people play different ways, try different things. And they've got their way, they, they think that suits their strength and... Um, but it doesn't really change anything that we do, to be frank. It's, you know, we're going and preparing for, for our game the way we want to play it. So our strategy suits us, their strategy suits them and makes it kind of interesting on Saturday night. Ian, how confident are you that there are no scars from that game at Twickenham before this tournament and what did you learn from it? Obviously that was the first time they deployed the 7-1 split on the bench. Um, well, we doubled up with the, their 7-1 split was just playing with 14 men and 13 men for quite a part of that game. So, you know, we tried that clever strategy and decided we didn't like it. So we're going to try a different one this week. Hi, Ian. Hi, Ian. It's, um, um, it's fair to say that both of you copped a, a fair bit last year. And uh, Can you just explain to us who aren't as close to it what that was like and how you guys got through that with you and your family and how proud you are now to to be here in the World Cup final? Well, I've just started to get my back nice and straight from last year and um, now you're going to try and make me hunched over again. It's, um, it's, a life of a, it's a life in this business. It's a tough game and um, it's a tough game when you're trying to get your performance right and it's a tough game where people around you see things differently um, but um, we've learned a lot about ourselves. Um, take massive pride in the jersey and, and making sure that we achieve the levels that, that we want to. And, you know, the rest of that's probably a conversation for another day. But, um, like, I keep pulling it back to the fact is that hasn't altered our vision of where, the, where we wanted this team to be. And I, I know we've probably surprised a few people, but I don't think we've surprised ourselves. Ian, Jacques this morning described this occasion as probably the biggest one there'll ever be, certainly the biggest one he's you know, ever going to be a part of. Um, would you agree with that? And, and just how would you describe the occasion that's in front of you? Yeah, big. It's, um, look, you know, we're, we're, that's what World Cup finals are about. I mean, I, I guess we, we've, we've, this is our second one um, that we've been to and Look, I don't think there's ever a small one. And um, and I think that the fact is we've got two two teams that are, have been the old foes for a long, long time playing each other. And we all remember the last final that they had, and that was an epic. And and I guess there's a, a hope that it'll be the same, you know. And 
then you do the maths and you add three World Cups each and someone's going to win four. There's, it's just a special occasion, isn't it? And you know, we've had a few recently. We had the 100th test against them in 2021 over in Townsville. And um, so there, there have been a few big, big tests we've played against these guys. And uh, look, massive regard for each other, you know, and, and I'm sure Jacques would say the same thing. We Massive respect for them as a country for how they play and, and it kind of makes it, it's a pretty cool week to get ready for. Just a question over here, Ian. We, we know the plans of all the guys that are departing, whether they're playing offshore or retiring. Have you, have you made plans for the future? Are you just going to decompress after the tournament? Or have you uh, got ideas that you want to coach elsewhere? Can you give us an insight, please? Yeah, I've got lots of ideas, but first I'm going to go mow my lawns. Okay, Chrissy. Uh, uh, Sam, uh, see you, Khaleesi. You had some nice words. I will be coaching, though, by the way. Uh, Sam, C. Khaleesi had some lovely words about you this morning uh, and he also spoke about the fact that uh, he may have seen you in hospital a couple of years ago. Um, are you able to just tell us about that relationship that you've developed with him and also what your opinion of him is as well? Yeah, I haven't um, he nor seen or heard, but it doesn't surprise me uh, with Sia. He's an um, exceptional human. Uh, our relationship goes back a wee way now. We sort of burst onto the international scene um, at similar similar times. Uh, yeah, massive um, respect for coming to visit me in, in hospital too, even though I was, um, I was pretty sort of drugged out at that stage and the, my visitors, I've only got very faint me memories of them unfortunately, but um, I think Rassi came, came to the hospital as well and, and Francois Lowe, so a few of those South African boys and that's where you know there's so much respect on the field but off the field for for acts like that and the interactions we have post game um over a beer which have been going back for as, as long as the the rivalry's been there so look see is i think everyone knows he's an inspirational skipper he's a big part of their team um i think w when he speaks um he sort of demands respect and that's just from without even seeing him in the environment that's just through seeing how he speaks to the public so uh, yeah uh, look forward to a, another battle with him um, but yeah a lot of res the, the respect's mutual uh, Sam, I don't know whether this is the time or the place for, for a technical question, but I'm sure you've, you've enjoyed the way you've, you've approached the breakdown over the course of this tournament. Um, in a couple of seconds, teach us how to be so good at the breakdown where you soak up so much pressure without conceding penalties. How do you, how do you go about doing that? A couple of seconds. Uh, he just guesses. Yeah. It's... Uh, Look, it's a it's a team it's a team thing, man. It's uh, it's trusting your teammates. Um, it's trusting yourself to to make the right decision at the right time. But ultimately, it's knowing that if you're not hundred percent confident in in the decision, that you're willing to to back out and defend another phase because you 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 know your teammates are going to get back, get up on side, and go again and again and again. And there was no better example of that than at the end of the Irish game where guys just kept showing up for each other no matter what the fatigue levels were. So moments like that um, build a lot of trust and confidence in each other and I'm, I'm picking we're going to have to dig pretty deep into the well again um, on Saturday. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. To stay up to date with all the latest news from the New Zealand Herald, click the subscribe button below or check out one of the videos here. And head over to nzherald.co.nz for more details on these stories and more.